We merely shake our heads at female misbehaviour. Mothers increasingly don't care about the health of their children when it comes to breastfeeding. Advertising campaigns are a highly visible feature in hospitals and clinics. Women actually need to be persuaded to breastfeed their own babies. And the main argument for breastfeeding is not the obvious health benefit for the child, but instead how it helps the mother with weight loss. There's something very worrying about this. It's undisputed that breast milk is the ideal food for babies and also benefits them by passing on the mother's immunity from many infections. It's also a fact that very few women have some physical problem that prevents them from successfully breastfeeding. Those two things taken together can only mean one thing. The incredible lack of interest mothers are showing in the health of their babies is mostly down to choice. 99% of mothers are choosing not to breastfeed for the bare minimum time, choosing not to provide the best start in life for their children. Not because they can't, but because they don't want to. Under the last 50 years of feminist influence, women have grown to believe that fathers are optional accessories instead of essential partners. Bunch of girls like you don't need no man to help you raise no child. You don't need no man. Shut the fuck up with the bullshit. Yeah, you could do it without a man, but that don't mean it's to be done. Shit, you could drive a car with your feet if you want to. That don't make it a good fucking idea. These women think that children are no worse off without fathers, and that the key to a successful family is children in childcare while she goes to work. Which you'd spent the money on a childminder, mm -hmm. yeah. so you could go to work uh, yeah, that's and how do your job. Childminder. That's right. That's what you wanted to yeah. do. I work full time because I thought it was good for the kids to see a role model going to work rather than sitting at home Absolutely. and just living the life of luxury at yeah. home. How have women become so dissociated from what it means to be a decent parent? There have been a lot of changes in society over the past 20 or 30 years that could contribute to the rise in young people's suicides, um, which are, you know, things like. Um, Nowadays, there's quite a different home structure from that that people might have experienced prior to, you know, the sort of 70s and 80s, which was that, you know, nowadays there's far more likely to be both parents working. Single mothers are often seen in a sympathetic light, as if they're victims of some tragedy. The vast numbers of um, single parent mothers who actually are really, really struggling and they're not getting anything from their partners, or often case where women are really left quite destitute. The truth is that most single mothers are single by choice, not by accident. They've chosen to disregard a man's rights and have a child when he doesn't want to be a father. They're not victims, they're perpetrators. I think it's really important to remember when people say unmarried fathers have no rights, or there's a lack of rights, and that unmarried fathers need rights. We need to think about who are these unmarried fathers, and it can be all sorts of situations. Somewhere we're going to be very sympathetic towards them having rights, and other scenarios where actually the thought of giving an unmarried father an automatic right, an automatic right, would be quite inappropriate. There's some stranger rapist or some uh, anonymous um, one-night stand. It doesn't really tell us much about the nature of those people, their ability to parent, or their suitability to parent. If a woman decides to have a baby after sex with a man that she barely knows, where he might not even know he's a father, I'd say the woman's suitability to parent is far more at issue than the man's. Carol was hoping you might help her find out who its father is. <laughs> you mean you don't know who it is? All she knows is that it happened at New Year's Eve at your party. At the fancy dress? At about 10 o'clock. It's at the beginning, before a child even exists, that the problems with parenting really start, and it's the only time that we can really solve them. The issue is to strive to ensure that women are together with men before a child is conceived, and in today's feminised times, that's about re-educating women. I came from a single parent family, most of my friends are from single parent families, um, I'm going out as a single mother right now, and what I can see is enormously difficult. Um, it's, uh, you're working so, you, so most of your day is gone. You can't, you can't be spending a lot of time with your child. Um, 
my girlfriend spends barely any time with her child and I feel almost guilty every time I see her because I'm taking time away from her child again. Uh, it's, it's just hugely difficult. Um, you need to have two people so that one can cover the other. It's, it's, you know, it's, just, it's just a simple matter of efficiency. If you're going to create a life and bring somebody up, which is probably the biggest, most important job that any human has, and you do it without a co-pilot, then you are being, um, you know, it's being selfish. Uh, I think you, you're you're threatening the life that you're bringing up. You're, if it happens outside your control, it happens outside your control, and that's you know, that's, if you break up, that's not you know, that that happens. These things happen. But if you're bringing a child into 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 this world and you haven't even considered any of that, then there's something fundamentally wrong with that decision. If you don't bring the father into it, if, you, if you're if not thinking about the, the fate of, of the child, then who are you thinking about? There's only one other person left for you to be thinking about, and it's yourself. Fathers have been maligned a great deal in recent times with respect to taking responsibility for their children. There are lots of situations, and history is littered with lots of fathers, and, and present day, fathers walk, walk away from their kids and walk away from their responsibilities. History is not littered with fathers abandoning families. The exact opposite is true. History is built on men staying with families. Civilization exists due to the commitment of men to family. How have we come to accept such a hateful and mistaken myth? In the UK, we had the CSA, which was set up to basically hunt down thousands of alleged irresponsible fathers who had left their mothers and were not financially supporting their children. This government agency created formulas for calculating how much money fathers were required to pay every month. Where Child Support Act perhaps has left men in quite an um, disadvantageous position. They've just been ironed out, some of those positions have been ironed out. They're taking into account how much money is needed for a father to actually visit a child and so not strip him of that type of money so that he can actually afford to visit the child. I still have to pay uh, maintenance for uh, and the children, even when I have the children for the week school holidays, she still has to be paid maintenance, which is totally unfair uh, because she, I've got my children in the summer holidays, I had my children for three of the weeks, yet I still had to pay for six weeks. Now I'm not paying for my ex-partner, I'm paying for my children. so. It was basically, if you don't pay, you don't get your children. But since then, which has now been going on three years, if it wasn't for my mum and dad, I would have had to give up a long time ago because I just, didn't, I just don't have the funds available after paying maintenance, after paying uh, a lot of the debts that she had run up. These formulas were so onerous that they often left men destitute, homeless, and has driven hundreds to suicide. This is not an exaggeration. 80 men commit suicide every week and a proportion of these are linked to impossible child support burdens. Now, we've already calculated that uh, on your salary you can expect to pay about £320 a month. Oh, come on. These men are forced by law to pay for their children, but at the same time, the law does nothing to allow them to see their children if the mothers decide that they shouldn't. Men are generally very straightforward when it comes to children and family. Where a man wants to have a child with a woman, he will stay and form a family with her. Where he doesn't want a child and is duped into fatherhood, he'll often suck it up and still stay with the woman, but will also often choose not to be enslaved. Will you learn a new song to sing, please? You're the one who walked out on Joey. I never walked out on him, I walked out on you. Where fathers split with the mother, but have a wanted child that he's allowed to see, they pay child support. Where he's prevented from seeing his children and still made to pay, he will often default on payments. But this is not really about the money. This is sometimes the only way a father can protest about being kept from his children. I know CSA was still chasing me, but I would feel a lot less inclined to be financially responsible for that child. What about morally? Morally, yeah, I would, yeah. I, I mean, me, myself, I would still, I, would st I wouldn't jump ship. I would still be there for the, for, for, for the child. But it would be my own choice. And I'd feel, I, it would rankle that somebody was saying legally I have to be responsible for this child or financially responsible for this child. It would be my choice. It just so happens I would choose to do, be responsible for that child. Somebody else might not. So is your main issue with that 
um, the legal responsibility rather than the moral? I guess so, because it's somebody saying, I haven't got a choice. I mean, if I choose to do something which happens to be, go along with what society would want me to do, that's fine. But equally, I should have the ability to choose something that goes against what society may say is moral. Um, take homosexuality as, 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 as an example. That used to be illegal. Um, I mean, not just illegal, it used to be immoral. It, 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 was, it was a sign of insanity. It was, it was, it was classed not too long ago as um, a, mental, a mental disease, a mental illness. Society classed it as that which meant that it was taken outside your hands whether you wanted to make this, this, this decision yourself or not. 